Many of us uh, may be thinking of what happened in Barcelona in 2017, but perhaps not many of us have an understanding what that was like. And with me here, there's a first-hand witness and victim of that event in Barcelona. Ethan with us here today. How have you been affected by this experience, Ethan? I think, personally altogether, being affected by this kind of experience, it has a lot of mental strain on you, especially mm -hmm. within the short term and long term. Mm -hmm. I have gone to people inside school and outside school for help, and still, even to this day, I still need that help, even if it's four years. It's still ingrained in my mind. Even when I go to like Talkie Town, for instance, I still have those memories that flash back. Mm -hmm. It's something that will stay in my mind for the rest of my life, mm -hmm. and I don't think I can ever get rid of it. Would you be able to describe to us what it was like, that memory that you have? I remember it very vividly, uh, very well. So on August 17th, my dad's birthday in 2017, we were on a coach, because with our holiday plan, we had a coach to go where we wanted. And there were two decisions we could pick from, going either to Barcelona Football Stadium or Barcelona, the city centre. So with most of us, our family picked Barcelona city centre. So I say it's around 12 o'clock. We got to Barcelona city centre. So we got off the bus, had a little bit of a walk around, seeing some of the shops, some of the pubs that we could go to to get something to eat. So I say around one o'clock, we were starting to get a bit hungry. So before where we were walking, my dad found a pub that was doing this really good price. I think it was with a burger and a beer for like five euros. So we were starting to head over there. And as soon as we crossed over the road from the middle, all we heard was a crash and screaming and people just flooding down the streets run, trying to run away. We didn't know what was going on, so we had to get to the safest possible place, but I was frozen, I, I couldn't move. I was that scared. But luckily I had my dad there, he was the main hero of the story, that got me, my brother and my mum and just chucked us into a random cafe, which to applause the cafe, they were the most loveliest people even if they couldn't understand English very well, they were still there trying to help all of us, give us water, trying to calm us down through this horrible situation. So we were sat there shivering, shaking. I was nearly sick. I was just that scared. I had no conclusion. I had no thinking of what would happen next, which much made me the most worried because I like to think in my head, oh, this can happen or this can happen. But I generally didn't know what could happen. So I'll say after about two, three hours, there was a bang on the shutter and we were all scared. We didn't know it could be them or it could be the police. Luckily, in our favour, it was the police. So they, we opened the shutters and as soon as we got out, I turned around. The van was around 20 feet away from us and it was destroyed. But that wasn't crashing into like walls or buildings. That was just crashing into as many people as they could. And I think that moment there has really set into my mind how worse it could have been and how lucky of a person I am. Must have been a really traumatic experience for you and thank you for being so brave and sharing that with us. Uh, what are some of the short term and long term effects for you? So with short term, it's about a day or two after, I had a little bit struggling with sleep because it would just pop up in nightmares because obviously it was so recent and it was quite frequent. Uh, couldn't really go far from the hotel because it would just sit in my mind and I'd be very scared. Um, probably shaking a bit, I had constant shakes for a little bit. But in long term, screaming, so children or people screaming kind of makes me shake up a little bit, but I've got better at it. Um, going down to Talkie Towns, as I said before, I still have those flashback memories of the, because the Talkie Towns quite similar to Barcelona. So I still remember all that. And when I'm walking in town as well, I, can own, I can't listen to any music because I'm still paranoid. Wow, wow, wow. Must be difficult for you to live with those effects as a person. And I'm grateful for you that you haven't given up on education and also finding ways to cope better. What are the things that are helping you cope at the moment? At this moment in time, I would say more walking. So I go out for some walks some days, maybe by myself or just with a few mates. And that kind of really helps set my mind in tone that it is different, that I have people there who can support me. I also, at this moment in time, for more support, I go into school, obviously I talk to you, 
with them using the Growth Mindset book. That helps a lot with me because it kind of makes me feel more grateful that I am here, that I have had this chance to not be dead but to be alive and survive it. As they also get outside help from mental health consultants and then maybe going to have more like one-on-ones because it helps you put that memory in the back of my head so I can think, okay, it's not bad, it's, it's bad, but it's not prominent in my head. I can live all my life without being scared and being taught some of those techniques of the grounding method using all your five senses has really helped. I'm glad that there is plenty of support and scaffolding around you that is useful. And uh, you mentioned and, uh, earlier on that your parents were there and your dad was a hero. How have they been affected themselves by this? More it was affecting my mum the worst. <clears throat> so like me, screaming would affect her. But I think that's stopped now. Uh, any talk about it, she couldn't be there. She would have to leave because it was too overwhelming. And she did get diagnosed with PTSD, but I think after a while it got sorted. And then she still to this day has fear of shutters or when shutters are opening in the pet where she works, she can't be near it. She has to close her ears because it'll just bring back the memories and not overflow. Wow, wow. Living with the scars of 2017 as a family. And how about your dad? Does he ever talk about this with you? He, well? he doesn't really want to talk about it, which I understand. It's a very scarring moment, especially since he was looking after me and my brother and my mum. He, he doesn't want to think about what could have happened because he, loved, he loves us to bits. He would not want to think of the worst possibilities, which I understand, so I didn't want to push him any more on it. Mm, thank you for being really an adult in that sense and honouring his space and his perhaps perspective to give him the space to talk when he actually comes to that place to talk about it and also allowing him to hold that back. That's very brave of you and also a mark of respect for others. Uh, thank you for that. Uh, what advice would you give to Perhaps young people in a classroom who may be watching a video about the effects of radicalization and also perhaps those who are at the risk of rad radicalization. For watching videos, I would say you would definitely have to take those seriously. People might think, oh, this is funny because it's not integrated to thinking, oh, this could happen, but it generally does. So I would take it seriously and think of like other people who have been in that situation, if you have anyone close to you, or just think how you would feel. So if you're like, okay, I need to take this seriously, I need to actually report this, because it won't only just affect you, but it will affect others. And taking that first step to report it mm. uh, will only not help you, but help others. Mm. And for people who are at risk of it, you, if you are worried about it, or as risk as before, go ask any teachers or your family members or even your friends just talk to any of them and they'll be able to give you a, a solution to help you to not be radicalized to not go down thinking all these crazy kind of theories mm, thank you for sharing that advice so there is that i'm um, hearing that people should reach out whether it's to family friends uh, relatives if you're in school of course speak to your teachers that is uh, really good for that network of responsible adults around you uh, being a place to connect with. Now, putting you on the spot again, if there is one thing and you had everything in the world, uh, what would you perhaps say to the people in Barcelona in that cafe or those people there? What would you do if you had uh, all the powers in your hands? I would, for instance, I'll go back there, go to the, peop the, the staff members of that cafe and just thank them. I couldn't think of anything else maybe you can buy some gifts, but I still don't think that would repay what they've done for us. Mm. They probably think it's something little, but in the scheme of it, it was a very big thing because it helped all of us and everyone there get through it. Mm. So what I think is just thank you generally. It's what the best thing I could possibly do. So I don't think any kind of repayment would, would be good enough to what they've done for us. Mm. And to the families there, they, they generally need a pat on the back. They need, they need some type of reward, something big, because what they've done to help their family and their children is one of the bravest things. They're putting themselves in the dangerous situation to protect their own children. And I don't think, personally, I think there's nothing else more noble than that. Mm. 
So all I have to say to them is just, thank you for being who you are and saving your children. You don't know how much that means to people. Thank you, Ethan, uh, for extending that thanks. And I join him in thanking anyone who supported and uh, still supports those who are victims of the 2017 terror attack in Barcelona. And again, like Ethan, reach out for help if you need it. And uh, may you know that the last word is not yet said. Reach out for help and you will be supported. And to those in Spain, uh, I echo Ethan's words. Thank you so much. And we hope that this world will continue to be a better place with those small acts of kindness and love that make the biggest difference to the world. Ethan, thank you for sharing your story and with us. Thank you for having me and thank you for listening.